Hey guys, Brian Osborne here from Answers in Genesis, and I hope you're doing well. I actually just got done speaking here at the Ark Encounter, post the COVID chaos a little bit, and we are open for business here at the Creation Museum and the Ark Encounter, and people are here, and just great to see people here again, and I encourage you to come and see it if you haven't already. Uh, but um, I want to do a quick little video while I'm here at the Ark Encounter, looking at our lesson today, which is on the Gospels, and the four different uh, Gospels we have in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And these four Gospels present different perspectives on the life of Christ. And they're all about Christ, and they're consistent with one another. But they give you different angles on the life of Christ. And so, really, Gospels aren't biographies in the traditional sense. They're not focused on a, a straightforward chronological presentation of Christ and His life. There are big gaps here or there. But, but the focus of the Gospels is to give us a, a good summary of the life of Christ and what His mission is all about, bringing salvation to sinners to the glory of God. And so you'll definitely see that all the way through. And so I want to quickly kind of focus on just the main topic and the general audience for each of the Gospels. And I want to make a connection here, that is, I'm here at the Ark Encounter, people are walking by, they're getting to the buses, and we see all sorts of people. And as people come to the Ark Encounter, they're all seeing the same stuff. But they might tell you different parts of it uh, that were highlighted to them. Maybe because of their own perspective, their own personal experience, maybe something they just really liked. So for some of the people, the outside of the ark that you see behind me, just the size and the scale is something that just really blows them away. And they love seeing the grandeur of this ark and it being a real ship and real history. And that really speaks to them. For some, they like going on the inside. On the inside, the architecture is incredible. You've seen some of that maybe in other videos where you see the exhibits and the woodwork and it's so incredible. The artwork is so well done. The content is also so good. Some may love all the horticulture work outside around the Ark Encounter and it really has flourished over the last few years. It's getting more and more beautiful by the seasons that go by. They're doing an incredible job. Uh, for the kids, they probably love the animals encounter, the animal encounters. Those are really popular, especially for families with kids, to, to go see these shows about the animals, learn details about them, interact with the animals. And so different people would, would give you different focuses on different parts of the Ark Encounter, although they're talking about the same thing. And in a similar way with the Gospels, they're all focusing on Christ, and it's all about Him. But they're giving you different details based on uh, who they're writing to and, and their main driving point behind what they're writing. And of course, the overall arching theme for all the Gospels is Christ is King, and He has come to pay the sin debt we couldn't pay, and He's risen from the grave, put your faith in Him. So very quickly, the four Gospels are different angles. First, we have the book of Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew. And Matthew is unmistakably writing to a Jewish audience. He starts off his Gospel giving a genealogy that connects Jesus to Abraham and to David, showing that connection to those Jewish roots and those prophecies of the Old Testament. Speaking of that, Matthew again and again is connecting Jesus and his life to the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecies. And so he's writing clearly to a Jewish audience, calling Jesus the son of David, which was a fulfillment of the promise to David that from David's line comes the Messiah who sets up his kingdom forever. <laughs> and so it's a connection to that reality. And so we see Matthew writing to mainly a Jewish audience and really emphasizing his connection to the Old Testament because that would really speak to those Jews he was writing to, and that Jesus is the Son of God, the Son of David, in fulfillment of the Old Testament. Now, for Mark, we go on to Mark. Now, Mark is writing to what appears to be maybe a mix of, of Jews and Gentiles. In Mark, you have a couple major things. First of all, Mark is like the highlights, the clip notes. It's very quick, very fast moving. You see the word immediately, 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 again and again. So he's really covering the highlights. And he's really highlighting how Jesus was a servant. Right? He's laying down his life for the people, laying down his life as a ransom for mankind. And so the title Suffering Servant fits really well for the book of Mark. And again, he's, this, uh, this title and this application of Jesus applies to Jews and Gentiles equally. So it's written kind of to both of them. And then we go on to the book of Luke. Now with Luke, Luke appears to be writing to more of a Gentile audience. He's a Gentile writing to a Gentile Theopolis with a Gentile audience in mind. And so you see throughout the book of Luke how Jesus is connecting to all people, not just Jews, but also Gentiles and connecting to men and women, clean and unclean by Jewish standards. He's a, he's a savior for all people. And so you see the title, the Son of Man, really fits well with the book of Luke as he is a, he's a savior for all of mankind. There's a connection to Daniel there as well in prophecy. But the Son of Man, he's a savior for all people, including the Gentiles. 
and then you get to the book of John. Now in John, it's unmistakable. John is driving home the core principle truth that all the other gospel writers agree with, and that is Jesus is God, God in flesh. John is just really driving this home. This is for a general audience. That Jesus is God. He is the creator God. He is the eternal God. He's the God who's become flesh and has paid that perfect infinite debt we can never pay. And so he's really driving that central point home to everybody. All right, and that's the main point of John. So with so with the book of Matthew, he's the king of the Jews, more of a Jewish audience. You've got the book of Mark, who is the suffering servant for both Jews and Gentiles. The book of Luke, he's a son of man, a savior uh, for the Gentiles as well. In the book of John, he is the son of God, the king of kings and lord of lords from eternity past through eternity future. He is God. And each one is consistent with the other. Each one highlights different details, different events in the life of Jesus. But if you read them in context, they're consistent with one another. And they really just help complement one another and really giving us a good portrayal of the life of Christ and the point of that life, which is to bring salvation to sinners for the glory of God. So you can trust it. It's good. They really highlight each other. It's powerful. Hope that's encouraging to you guys and helpful. And I hope you enjoyed this view behind me. We'll talk later on. See you guys.